Well, today our reading comes from Genesis chapter 12. I invite you to grab your Bible. If you didn't bring yours, we have plenty. Look at the racks in front of you. Genesis chapter 12, we're going back to the beginning. This is called, the section of scripture is called the call of Abraham. I'm going to start with chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your fam father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he, when he left Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household at Haran. And he headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived in Canaan, Abraham traveled through the land as far as Shechem. There he set up a camp beside the Oak of Moreh. At that time, the land was inhabited by Canaanites. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, I will give this land to your descendants. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord, which had appeared to him. After that, Abram traveled south and set up camp in the hill country with Bethel to the west and I in the east. There he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. Then Abram continued traveling south by stages for the Negev. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Okay, preacher, what you going to do with that? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So here's the question. Have you ever had to move? Oh, yeah. 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 19 times. <laughs> 19 times. <laughs> You win. <laughs> but have you ever had to to move and you didn't get a choice in the matter? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I have that opportunity every year. So y'all love me. I love you. We're gonna try and keep this together for a while. But if you've ever had to move and you didn't have a say in it. How did that make you feel? Was it a, like a warm, comfortable thing that happened to you? And if you had to move, was it one of those moves where you had to leave family and friends hours behind so that where you moved into, you didn't know anybody, you didn't have any connections, you had to basically start over? Now, I don't know about you, but one of the first things I think about whenever I do have to move is, will I be comfortable there? Is this going to be a place where I'm going to feel at home? Is this going to be a spot that I'm going to like? Is this going to be, you know, what's the weather going to be like? All those things that we consider. We think about comfort. But when I think about biblical times, and I think about Abram and Sarai listening to the call of the Lord. And when the Lord said, it's time for you to move, it was a very different time. They didn't get to call all my son's movers, have them pack them up and go. No, they had to pack up their tents. They had to round up their livestock. They had to move everything that they had. And did you notice that when God made his command, gave his command to Abram, did you notice there wasn't a destination? Leave. Go to a land that I will show you. No address? Come on, Lord. You know, where am I going? The kind of faith it must have taken Abram to understand that what he was called to do, he was called to step out in a way that showed his dedication and his faithfulness to the Lord. 
<clears throat> now, when we think of Abram and Sarai, you're going like, Kathy, you're pronouncing it wrong. We know them as Abraham and Sarah, don't we? Abraham, who was the husband of Sarah, the believer in God that continued the journey that was begun by his father, the deceiver of Pharaoh, who was afraid for his, so afraid for his life that he lied and said that his wife was his sister. Abraham, the negotiator for a few lives that was spared in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The father of both Ishmael and Isaac. The greatest rivalry that still exists today in the Middle East between the Arabs and the Israelis. Abraham, the man that God made a covenant and promised to be the father of the nations, the man whom God chose himself and framed a story of redemption, the one who the very scripture, his story is what calls to us, to us and to two other faith traditions. And then there's Sarah. We know Sarah as the wife of Abraham. She's also the one that deceived the Pharaoh, saying, yes, that is my brother, not my husband. The wife that was so disappointed that she was unable to bear children that she gave her handmaiden to her husband, Hagar, so that his, his, her husband's line could continue. The woman who then became so jealous that once she became pregnant, she had demanded that this woman that she had coerced or told to do this thing, kick her out. I don't want her anywhere around me or my family. A woman who laughed at God when God told her, when she heard that even in her old age, she was going to bear children. The woman who was a mother at 90 years old. The woman through whom God fulfilled his promise of creating his covenant people. See, when we hear Abraham and Sarah, those are the stories we think of, aren't they? Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and each one of those has probably been a Sunday school lesson or a vacation Bible school lesson that you've heard somewhere in your time somewhere in your life but I wonder if the real story about Abraham and Sarah isn't looking back over all the things that were accomplished but the real story is that Abram and Sarah said yes to God they were God talked to them and said I need you to do this. And they said, okay, God. okay, God. Okay, I can do this. I will step out in your name. I will make a difference. Well, why did God choose them? We don't know. We don't know if God knew that they were going to do all those things. You know, that is not for us to say. But God made the decision that there needed to be God's people, his people, that would step out and make a difference. So what is this story? How does it even connect to us other than we know that it is the, you know, the, the base, basic tenet of our faith? But how does it connect to us? Maybe it's in our willingness to say yes to God. Even when we don't know what the end results are going to be or how we are going to step out. Maybe it's something about how we need to be available. Even when we're uncertain, even when we're uncomfortable, and even when it looks like anything but what we really want to do. This is a happy sermon, isn't it? 
Because I don't know about you, but when I was reading this, I was like, God, I, I'm sorry. You know, this is one of those I'm not really <laughs> getting it. And then that's when God says, well, maybe that's why you need to preach it. <clears throat> maybe it's about saying yes. Maybe it's about stepping out. Maybe it's about doing things even when you're uncertain, but if you know that they are motivated by and through God, then that is what you need to do. How many times in our lives, y'all really don't have to raise your hands for this one, <laughs> do we not do things because it makes us uncomfortable? See, aren't you glad I said don't raise your hands? Because <laughs> I would dare say that everyone here there have been times when we were given opportunities, whether it's how to live, what to do, what to say, an opportunity to step out in. I would dare say we've all passed on some of those opportunities that were given to us. And we probably have pretty good reasons, in our opinion, about why not to. As Christians, one of the things that we are called to do is to look beyond our own means and our own abilities and our own capabilities and to do things that we can do because we are God's people. Because we know that when we're called to do something that makes us uncomfortable, we aren't doing it alone. We are doing it with and through the help of God we are making a difference in that way. Far too often we think it's all about me whenever a decision needs to be made. We spend a lot of time focusing on self. When, if we go back and we look at the verses in this, Abram's decision to say yes affected not just Abram and his family. It affected even us today. You see, our decisions, everything that we do, everything that we say, has a ripple effect. What do you mean? Well, the decision to do something or not do something leaves an effect in the world around us. We are all called people. If we are Christians, if we believe in Jesus Christ, and we say that God, you know, you said, we said yes, and you said okay, and let's move on with the story, then you have a call on your life. Not just me. All of us. And many of us are called to different things. And maybe we think that what we do isn't really a call. We just think, this is who I am and how I'm wired. Well, when we allow God to use those things within us, we can go to a place that we never dreamed possible. Some of us <coughs> struggle. It's like, you know, I just don't know if I can really be a Sunday school teacher. And yet, how many, how many people in here have ever taken on the challenge to teach something and you learn a whole lot more than the class? You have to. Right? You do the study, you do the research, and all of a sudden things start to make sense that didn't make sense before when you were just sitting back being a consumer instead of being somebody who is living into their call. Some of us have incredible gifts of music in our lives. How are we using those? Okay. Everybody can't be in the choir. I just want to tell y'all that. <laughs> I got to tell you, this is our greatest recruitment tool here at Chapelwood. The choir has grown incredibly. But everybody has a gift. If music is your gift, how are you using it to make a difference? Now, it's not always about singing and singing in the choir. Maybe it's about sharing that love and that joy with another who would appreciate it or could receive encouragement from it. What about taking care of the world around you? 
Kathy, that's a big space. No, I'm not talking about the whole world. I mean, yeah, we all need to be doing that. But there are people that I know in this congregation and beyond that they love being outdoors. And part of that is growing things and making things look beautiful. Of, you know, we've got someone here who cuts the back for I'm gonna call it the back 40. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> but he keeps it beautiful. And it, and because of his his work, we appreciate that. He's making Chapel Wood a better place by what he does. Some of you have beautiful yards. We got some weeds out front that need pulling. You know, if that's the thing that you can do. But you have a gift, you have a talent. And what about children? This is the one where everybody says, I can't teach, I'm not going to teach, I'm not. Look, forget that noise. Our children are our greatest gift and our greatest asset. They are the ones that make such a difference. Those of you that are teachers, I want to say, or have been teachers, I want to say thank you to you because you have invested in the lives of young people. And I know the character of so many of you out there that I know that you are the kind of person I would want teaching my children. And there's some other people, not so much. And the thing is, teachers never stop teaching. There's something about their character. It's their call in their life. And they'll teach anybody who stays around long enough. But especially the joy in teaching and loving on the children. And then there's another gift that I think that we don't really think is a gift. We don't think it's a thing at all. It's the ability to walk side by side with someone else when they're going through a hard time. To be that person who listens, to be that person who laughs, to be that person who cries, to be that person who patiently sits and waits with another as they're going through tough times. Each one of you has a call and a gift that you can offer and share with others. And because you do that, it makes a difference. Because you want to make sure that everybody uh, wakes up in the morning. So you maybe you do a phone tree and you check on all your single friends and say, hey, how's today? And you check and make sure you get home at night and everything's good. Some of you create some of the most beautiful cards I have ever seen. And you share those with others. And let's all just say how nice it is to get something in the mail besides a bill. <laughs> and you're sharing your talent and your passion in a way that transforms a life. I just, I've been in too many churches for too long where people say, I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to do. See, God approves. <laughs> and it's like, you're so wrong. Because when you give of yourself, it is the most valuable thing you can do. I read a story the other day. There was a man who was sitting at a bar, and he had all of his suitcases around him. And the person walked up to the bar and says, what's all this? And the guy said, stuff. Stuff I've accumulated over my life and all my, over, over time. And after a while, he left the bar and walked out the door. And nobody noticed that he was gone. And the person who walked in noticed another guy sitting at the bar, and he was surrounded by people. They were laughing, and they were telling stories and jokes, and they were having a wonderful time. And what he noticed is there wasn't any stuff around the person, but what there was were people 
people that enjoyed his life. And he said, well, my friends, it's time that I must be going. And as he walked out the door, everyone said, we're sorry to see you go, but we are so thankful that we have known you. You touched our lives. Friends, it's about the lives that we touch. It's about the ripples that we leave behind in the lives in our life that transform the lives of others. It's about realizing that whatever it is that God has called us to do is about part of his family. It's about doing what it is that we are called to do in a way that transforms the world around us. And it's not so big a task that we can't all participate because God has equipped you with exactly what you need to make a difference. God did not call you to do everything, but you were called to do something. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, for this day we give thanks. for the beauty of the summer and the sound of rain. It reminds us of growth. And Lord, that is what you call us to do, is you call us to grow in your word and in, your, in our lives into you, Lord, to be people who make a difference in your name. Lord, we ask for that growth. We ask, Lord, that you give us opportunities to embrace the gifts that you have given us to transform the world in your name. To be people called to right here and right now to make a difference. Lord, we are thankful to be your children. And we are blessed. Help us to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.